Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hi, this is Joanne Victoria with another recording of the Sanity Project Podcast, and I'm so glad you are here today. We are all fortunate enough to have Terry Wilderman, who's coming to us from Newport, Rhode Island. Terry is an accomplished businesswoman who has written a book called The Enchanted Boardroom, Evolve into an unstoppable intuitive leader. It's available everywhere. And what Terry is going to talk to us about today is how we can listen to our intuition and get past our fears so we can trust our intuition, which to me is a very important topic. So Terry Wildeman, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so exciting to be here with you. Well, I am grateful that you are here and I am pleased to see this aspect of your work in leadership. And I I think the audience needs to know, and I think they need to know anyway, how you got to this place where you are now uh, involved in intuitive leadership. Well, (laughs) that's a loaded question because... And I meant it to be. (laughs) (laughs) It is. (laughs) Um, I've been highly intuitive my whole life just didn't realize it. Uh, There were things that would happen and my belly was just sort of uncomfortable. uh, And it took me a little bit to realize that maybe I should start listening to this belly. And I did. Um, But, you know, we're often raised in, for those of us who have intuitive gifts, it gets poo-pooed by our parents and our teachers and the people around us because it's more comfortable to live in a very practical, technical, and logical world. And I would do things um, and or I would say things and they would look at me like I had three heads on my shoulders. And you get enough of that and you start to harness how you feel and tap it down and tap it down and tap it down. I know you know what I'm talking about with that, Joanne. Yes, yes. I have a similar path. I did not even know the word intuition existed. Uh, Somebody told me about it. It's a story that I won't take up your time with. And uh, I I stared at him because I've never heard of it before. And then I did some research and then I realized – that I've been using it my entire life unknowingly. Exactly. And we are. We, we use it. So what is intuition? And how did it get me here? Well, intuition is that feeling in your gut. It can be the images that you constantly get in your mind's eye. It can be disembodied words that you hear, which actually saved my life a few times. It can be just a feeling that you have or an internal knowing. Any of those, that falls under the category of intuition. And some of us have stronger, are stronger in one than another. Um, when I, when, when things really started getting intense, I would hear words in my left ear. But what I didn't realize is growing up, I would always be getting images. So if I would do art or anything, I would just, I, I would see these images in my mind and then just do it. Or if I felt compelled to do something, this prodding, it was a feeling that came, um, just this inner knowing that I needed to do something or or be something. And and I'll never forget one of the first times when I realized that I could channel. You you were talking about before the show about um, channeling. We all have the capability of channel. Every single one of us on the planet have a capability of channeling. And I was sitting on the front step of my home and um, the little girl next to her and my sister just had this big fight. And I sat there next to her and I was saying these words, blah, 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 blah. And um, we, we hugged, she got up and laughed. And I remember walking to the house saying, I have no idea where those words came from. And I remember I it. So yeah, I understand. Clear. I understand. And I was young. I, I was maybe 10, 11 years old. Wow. 
And it was like, okay, they were, and, and I remember thinking, those were old words. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and so snippets like that would happen. And another snippet that happened was when I was standing in my front yard and, you know, being very present, when you are truly grounded, present and centered, you see the colors around you deeply. You, you see what is really in front of you. But we tend to grow up unconscious. And I remember standing in my front yard one day having this, clear moment of groundedness and centeredness and everything was so clear and bright and the colors were amazing and I was like what the heck is this and as quickly as it came it went away and I went back into the fog if that makes sense yeah it does and, you know and because 10 percent and here's the thing that people don't realize is our brain power from the neck up, that's just 10%. 90% is our subconscious. So 10% is our conscious, 90% is our subconscious. And when we integrate all of it together, miracles and magic happen when we get out of the way. Well, getting out of the way is difficult for most people because their ego or a presentation of their ego shows up and they like to be in control, something, of course, that I have never experienced in my life. Oh, never. Ever. <laughs> Nor and I. I have never experienced Ever. We are perfect. <laughs> we are perfect aliens. So yeah, how... Do you take this to the to the boardroom to the corporations? How do you help uh, your clients solve all of these issues that they have on a daily basis with intuition? How do you get them to trust themselves, trust their subconscious mind? Because that's a neat trick. It is a really cool trick. And what I do is I teach them. One of the areas I get into is muscle testing. Uh, the body, as I mentioned, 90% of our um, knowledge, our awareness is actually subconscious. And when we muscle test, we allow our body to give us information. And I'm going to share this one example, which I just taught my 96-year-old mother. And it's called the sway test. This body... If you if you stand up, and if everybody who's listening to this wants to do this with me, please do it. And, and Joanne, if you want to do it with me, just go for it. I'm going to stand up now. Stand up now. Okay. So, and, and just square your feet under you and take a deep breath. And just imagine a magnet at the bottom of your feet connecting you to the earth. Okay? And, and you're really connected. And the body will naturally go forward for yes and it will go backwards for no. So I'm going to ask you, Joanne, to say the name of someone that is not you. Now, are there any Toms in your life? Oh, years ago, a Tom. Okay. So that's not, okay. That's not a good name. Uh, okay, I'm going to say teddy bear. Would you say my name is teddy bear? My name is Teddy Bear. Sorry, it's not. My body's going back. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So I'm a perfect, I am a perfect student for anything like this. This is brilliant. So, okay, my name is Red Cat. No. Okay. So, my name is Joanne Victoria. My name is Joanne Victoria. Oh, Jesus, I got swooned forward so fast. <laughs> so I smash it. My God, I exactly. just got pushed. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the sway test. So let's use it for a couple other things. Okay. Okay. So um, can you share a challenge with me that you're having that um, something on the surface that we can do yes and no questions to? A talent? A challenge. A problem, an issue. Oh, a, a challenge. I'm sorry. Yeah. My hearing is going uh, along with my eyesight. Um, <laughs> a challenge. Mm. 
about me personally? Okay, how about if we do this? I'll make it easy for you. How about we talk about, let's focus on breakfast for a moment. Okay, I'm just going to ask this question. Are you meant to have eggs for breakfast? Yes. Okay, so ask your body. Body, am I meant to have eggs for breakfast? Body, am I meant to have eggs for breakfast? Uh, It's kind of not moving at all. Okay, body, am I meant to have bacon for breakfast? Body, am I meant to have bacon for breakfast? Oh, yeah, I got swayed forward, yes. Okay. Body, am I meant to have toast for breakfast? I don't eat toast. Body, am I meant to have toast for breakfast? No. Okay. (laughs) Ask about goat cheese, please. (laughs) Body, are you meant to have goat cheese? No. Halfway between. Just, it's it's like, I knew that was coming. No, it's gone back. Okay. So... For those who are listening to this, and I know it sounds weird, but I don't eat anything from a cow. Okay, there you go. uh, So the only cheese that I do eat when I eat it, which is once a day with my eggs, is goat cheese. But I've been getting a real mm, signals, some signals that say, no, it's not, you can't do that. So everybody's going to have to call me or email me and tell me what I can eat with my eggs besides bacon. And your body is validating that. Absolutely. Very simple test. So, um, so you don't eat anything from a cow. Got it. Do you eat anything from, um, are you a vegan? No. Okay. So, uh, so you, you do eat, uh, other animals? Yes. Okay. Uh, meat. Okay. So let, let's ask, uh, is eating pork okay for you? Oh, Yes. Okay. Is eating fish okay? Okay. Is eating fish okay? Fish. Fish is fish is fine. Okay. Um, But we have several. We have fish and we have shellfish. So. Right. Right. Well, I was going to get to that. Is shell 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 shellfish work for you? No. Okay. No. So. Your body goes back and forth by asking you questions. And what have you done? You've gotten out of your logical brain. Yep. Which is only 10% of your consciousness. You are tapping. This just made it very easy for me to go shopping. Well, let me tell you, I am (laughs) sure that in the stores around here that have those, uh, you know, the security cameras, they're watching this wacky woman walking through the stores. I'll push (laughs) them out and go, ooh, that is gorgeous. This is for me. Body? and No. Darn it. <laughs> and, you know, I know. And, and so I shop. That's how I shop. Whether it's my food shopping, whether it's my grocery shopping. Um, I use, this, well, actually, uh, the sway test, I'm muscle testing using your fingers. I also use my fingers, but we don't have time today to get into that. But the sway test is the easiest way to get a yes or no answer. And as I mentioned to you, I just taught this to my 96 year old mother. Uh, my mom had a pair of glasses she absolutely loved. The, um, the frame, was um, flaking, and she also just got a brand new prescription from the doctor. The glasses were only like five months old, so they were still under warranty. So we went to the doctor, and my mother can't make a decision with her life. She really has a hard time with that, always has her entire life. So I said, Mom, stand up, and she's standing there. She has one hand on her walker, and I said, please close your eyes, I said, and, and I calibrated her. And the optician's looking at this, okay? Sure. She's, it's a young girl. And she's watching me and I said, okay, mom. Um, And and I calibrated her like I did with you with the names. And I said, okay, just close your eyes. And I I asked the optician, please hand me each of the six pair of glasses that were on the counter. And I said, mom, put your hand out. And she put her hand out. I said, okay, mom, is this the pair of glasses you're meant to buy? No. Great. Handed it over. Is this the pair of glasses you're meant to buy? No. And I did that with all six of them. Guess what? The only pair of glasses that she went forward to, and it was only one pair, was the pair she had. And that was the pair that they are replacing, and they are putting in a new prescription. Bam, by the being done, we were done in less than three minutes. And you don't have to wonder if you're making a mistake, as long as you exactly. know, you're in trust. And mm-hmm. don't have to wonder about anything, actually. Exactly. And that woman was so blown away. She says, people tend to lose my interest. You just held my interest so much. And I taught her in just a few minutes how to use the sway test, just like I did with you. 
So she is absolutely ecstatic. My mom got what she wanted. She felt comfortable and safe that she made the right decision. And this is part of working with intuition. So in teaching executives how to do this, what an easier, what an easy decision making tool. Isn't that an amazing tool for yes or no? That's absolutely yeah. perfect. So do you use the, this when you're dealing with leaders? Yeah, and I don't deal with leaders. I work with leaders. Because if I'm dealing with them, that means they're a problem. Yeah, I wrote down that you work with them. So I don't know why I said that. that. Well, because I, I meant to share that lesson. That's why. the difference. Our language creates a lot of the energy that we have in our body. Right. So if you think you need to deal with someone, that person, you are already making that person a problem. For Correct. example, you wake, you, know, you wake up out of bed and you're driving into work. Oh, I got to deal with Mary Jo. I got to deal with this person. I got to sure. deal with that person. Immediately, you're making them problems. However, when you shift your language, because your words have so much energy, you are, and instead you say, okay, I've got to work with Mary Jo on this project. I've got to work with Bobby Jo on this project. I've got to work with Alan on this project. Okay, everything is going to fall into place, and you allow things to unfold simply. It completely shifts the energy, the mindset, and the attitude, and things flow much easier. We really do create a lot of our own challenges and make them hard. Oh, God, really yes. Do. Yes. So how have they been, how have the leaders been receiving your process? They love it because it takes the pressure off. It's a form of stress. It's part of what I teach in stress management. Stress resilience is huge and everything is energy. Uh, you know, our mindset, our attitudes all create lots of stress and the higher up you go in a business in corporate America in your career the studies are showing that the more responsibility of course the more stress and does that impact your life of course it impacts your life it affects your health your wealth uh, your family your kids your significant other you know it affects everybody so how you choose to work with it and engage in it makes all the difference in the world. And something as simple as the sway test, which is so simple, you don't think it's working. When you learn how to ask just the right questions, and there are times, you know, one of the things with this, with using the sway test, it really is important to ask just the right questions. So if you keep getting no, no, no on something, but you're like, okay, something's off. This is your intuition. Just ask, is there another way to ask this question? And just allow the question to bubble to the surface. And then ask the questions. And then chances are that um, you'll move forward or backwards. In, and your intuition, your body is actually going to feel better uh, about the answer that comes up. So learning how to ask questions are equally important. So that's another thing that I teach folks how to do. How do you answer questions? How do you ask and formulate questions in a way that really brings out what you want instead of what you don't want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, um, as you say that the language and stuff, when I said deal and which is a habit, because I know I've said that word before, but I've also noticed, especially in my writing, uh, that I'm using different words now. Um, mm, nice. My, my choice of verbiage is changing, and I don't know why, and I just acknowledge that, you know, I'm just going to another place, a step forward, right. whatever, because I, you know, write every day, and at least every day, and mm -hmm. how could you write more than every day, Joanne? That's really weird. <laughs> you can write several times a day. I do, and... It, 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 I see that the, my language is changing, and I've noticed other people's language is changing as well. In fact, I almost commented about someone who also writes daily emails. I'm on his list just out of curiosity, and I've noticed that his writing is improving. Now, either he's mm -hmm. improving or somebody else is doing it for him, but it doesn't matter. It's just that I notice the difference. That's what matters to me. Mm -hmm. And when you notice something like that, then you notice how the questions that people ask themselves or ask of others, how when they do change, they get the response that they need to get as opposed to the, the, the same neutral or negative response or no Absolutely. response. Absolutely. And, and I wrote about this in my book. Um, there are specific words to avoid if possible, and they are don't not know. When you avoid don't, not, know, can't, won't, 
try. Try is another one that a lot of people say. When you keep saying the word try, there is a lack of commitment. There is always an escape hatch with the word try. So instead, use the word commit. I am, I will, I can, things like that. But when you stay away from don't, not, know, and especially in your writing, when you're looking, the moment I see that I wrote don't, I, re I reframe the sentence. Uh, no, comma, I reframe the sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a time and a place for those words. But they become so pervasive in our language, the everyday language, that we don't realize how negative our language is that actually can become. But when you say things, uh, when you use positive language, it completely shifts things. So again, there's a whole chapter, there's a, there's a whole section in my book around words, you know, positive words and phrases uh, to work with and those to stay away from. Well, I think, really the, I think the use, you know, the use of our language, the English language is what we have. And this, this I only write for English readers. I don't know any other language. Um, at all, really, to write in that language, and I would just hope that if it is translated at some point in time, that it's done in the same manner in which I write, so people get the intensity or the mm. sensitivity of what I say. But it's true that language is can be a killer if it's used in a mm -hmm. and inappropriate isn't even the right word um, if it's used without thought. Well, well, exactly, and 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 it also creates things we don't want. Okay, and I'll, and I'll share with you a very powerful example of that. A young man um, I know kept saying, "I need a break. I need a break. I need a break. I need a break." Uh, life was really getting um, was becoming very, very overwhelming, and this mantra kept going for several weeks, and all of a sudden this person gets hurt in an athletic event. And what did he break? His leg in five places. It's usually the leg in order to get your attention. You asked. And five, <laughs> yep. And five is the number of change in numerology. And this young person ended up getting the break. Um, however, not exactly as they wanted. Uh, and it was very fascinating to watch the whole thing unfold. And it was this constant language, languaging thing. It's like, wow, holy smokes, look at that connection. So, you know, oftentimes, I think it's not oftentimes, it's important to watch what we say and how we say it. And if we're constantly complaining and complaining and complaining and complaining and complaining, we are giving energy to the very thing we are complaining about. So when you step away from giving energy to that and instead focus on what you want instead of what you don't want, more of that is going to come to you. And that's part of the intuitive piece. Intuitively, things are gonna keep happening to guide you to where you wanna go, but you've gotta listen. And that's the key. We don't listen. We're too scared to listen to the messages that come. And it can be as simple as the same thing happening over and over again. Like, may I use the example of the podcast with the sound? Pardon? Can I, may I use the example of the podcasting with the sound? Sure. Okay. Uh, Ten podcasts in a row where the sound was really... Not what it should be. Correct. Not what it was supposed to be. Uh, hey, is that is it time to take a break from the pod, you know, from the podcasting for a little bit uh, and take care of other matters? It's not about stopping it. It's about maybe I need to take a little break so that I can take care of this issue, which is really part of what I meant to do. Because the, the, what happens is we're constantly striving for work-life balance. And this is what my TED Talk was about. Work-life balance doesn't exist. It's a myth. It's something that we've been sold. What does exist is work-life harmony. And harmony comes in when we truly listen to all the messages that are around us and we are completely present in the moment, focusing on what is happening in front of us. 
I'm using what we call third level listening. Third level listening is the sirens, the birds that show up, the, the little things that happened around you that validate what is happening in that moment. And that's called work-life harmony. So work-life harmony exists, but work-life balance, if a balance is in balance, there's no movement. And that's what we're striving for with work-life balance. We're striving for no movement, if you're going to use the balance as an example. And that's not life. Life is in constant movement. So when we focus in front of exactly what it is that is in front of us and give it our complete 100% attention, then we can easily move to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and give all of it the attention that it deserves instead of us compartmentalizing our brain in 20 million different compartments and not doing anything well. Well, I think our audience has... So much to re-listen to. If they li listening to this just once, listen to it again with a pad and paper. Because if you use a pen uh, or a pencil to write with, it gets into your body faster. The neurons feel it, and they will in hold on to it. I'm mm -hmm. all for pen and paper myself. So re-listen to this podcast. Share it with your team, with your friends, with your family and anyone else who you think might benefit. I want to thank Terry Wilderman for being here today from her lovely place in uh, Rhode Island, but it's time to go. So I'm going to ask Terry to tell you where you can find her because I know that there are people listening who want to take it to their bosses and say, hire her, hire her now. <laughs> So where can they uh, find you, Terry Wildeman? You can go to intuitiveleadership.com. And on there, you will get, oh, wow, third level listening, intuitiveleadership.com, bam. <laughs> uh, on there, you will get, uh, you will find my bio, you will find our Intuitive Leadership University. Uh, we have different products to help with a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. Uh, we also have VIP sessions and I have one-on-one -on -one sessions that works with emotion code and body code to assist in releasing a lot of uh, physical challenges that get in the way to help reduce uh, stress and increase stress resilience. So all that stuff is on that website, intuitiveleadership.com. There you go, audience. Re-listen, re-listen, and go to intuitiveleadership.com. I want to thank Terry Wildeman for being here today with the gift that she had to give to all of us. And I wish everyone a great day. Take care, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project podcast. Please go to askjoannevictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life-Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.